As trade talks between the US and UK get started, will Donald Trump follow through with his support for Boris Johnson? And what else can we expect to see during May? To discuss this, we're joined by Bob Mason from FX Empire. This is the Midweek Market Drivers. Well, hello, Bob, and thank you for joining us. As always, always a pleasure to speak to you. Let's jump straight into it, shall we? The first week of May has begun and as a custom for the first week of any month, monthly data should be released. What should we expect to see this week? Well, we saw enough data through the first half of the week to know the markets haven't been paying too much attention. Going into the second half of the week, however, that story might change. We've got, you know, the monthly non-farm payrolls. We've had the weekly jobless claims figures that have been quite alarming. And, you know, that continued rise has stressed the markets. So, Ahead of Friday's non-farms, we've got ADPs on Wednesday. So depending on how those those numbers turn out, you know, later on today, um, you know, that's going to be a telling sign. Um, they've not always correlated, but this time around, it's unlikely to be too dis- dissimilar in terms of direction. Then you've got, on Thursday, the initial jobless claims. Let's really pay a lot of attention to that. You know, another large number, you know, and that, that's more doom and gloom for the markets. And, you know, this is really selling in this economic contraction. You know, so unemployment continued, you know, increase in, you know, layoffs is really going to be a negative. And then we've got April uh, non-farm payrolls. We're not going to be too worried about wage growth right now, um, but non-farm payrolls, you know, that's going to be another alarming number. It's not going to be anything decent. And we might even see a record. So expect that to test the markets. Elsewhere, are we particularly bothered about, you know, the rest of the economic data coming out through the week? Probably not. I think employment numbers are going to be key. You know, obviously, Initial jobless claims out of the U.S. is the most dynamic, you know, economic indicator we're getting at the moment. So, expect some manoeuvres towards the end of the week. Elsewhere, Bob, what about monetary policy? The policy front, we've got the Bank of England in action on Thursday. Um, timing's a bit earlier in the day, so be be aware of that. Uh, any moves expected? We're not expecting any any further rate cuts now, and um, obviously we're expecting the QE program to remain steady. Um, we are expecting that to change, however, through the summer. Um, once lockdown measures have eased, you know, and we get to get some idea of, you know, what kind of economic recovery we're going to get. We're not going to get that V-shaped, you know, curve that many people were talking about weeks ago. You know, this is more embedded now, so more support is going to be needed. So best case scenario is for the BOE to talk of, you know, further supports come down the track and likely in the summer. Um, other than that, don't expect anything else. In the meantime, Bob, how have geopolitics been developing recently? Risk or risk? Well, it didn't disappear for too long, did it? You know, obviously over the weekend, we heard of China and the US, you know, firing at each other and there's the threat of sanctions and, and tariffs on China. And obviously China's not going to accept any more of that. Um, we had talked about this a while ago that Trump's going to be looking to divert attention away from, you know, his shortcomings in terms of handling the spread of the virus across the US. You know, that nonchalant um, behavior in the early days has led to a sizable number of deaths and obviously a significant number of infections. So Trump's passing the buck. Um, whether US voters buy into that remains to be seen. So expect more of this in the next few months, you know, as election fever heats up. You know, that's the only way Trump's going to win this election. And then you've got Iran, you know, there as well as, as another option. A bit of conflict in the Middle East. You know, voters like that in the US. So, you know, these two are certainly areas to consider in the coming weeks. Plenty of trade talks going on around the world, Bob, but the main one we want to focus on is the talks between the US and the UK. How have they been going and, and what do you expect to see as they pan out? US-UK trade talks, well, you know, since the EU referendum, you know, back in 2016, the market's been waiting for this, for trade talks to begin. What a time for them to begin, though. COVID-19, global lockdown, EU-UK negotiations going nowhere, and Trump under the hammer going into the November elections, and there's no guarantee that he's going to win, you know, so that all those trade agreement discussions that are are beginning now could come to to little um, come November should Trump lose the election. So it's going to be a tough one, especially with the way the US will be negotiating. It's going to be a, you know, one-sided agreement. The UK have little choice but to take it particularly with the EU dragging its feet and, you know, another extension of the transition period, looking likely the way things are going. So, yeah, while it's a positive for trade talks to have commenced, uh, is the UK going to get a fair agreement? No. 
and the devil's going to be in the details. I mean, we saw, you know, how the US drags it out, even with Mexico and Canada. So imagine what it would be like with the UK. Well, that'll certainly be interesting to see how those talks play out in the end. Let's move on to one of the uh, hot topics from prior weeks. How is oil doing, Bob? What a week for oil prices this week. You know, WTI is up by more than 20%, going through to Tuesday's close. You know, we're recovering from negative territory in the, in the May futures to seeing a bounce back. Um, obviously, we're not anywhere near the sort of $60, $70 a barrel levels that, you know, the shell producers can be like. And that's, you know, that's going to be an interesting, interesting thing to consider. Shell producers did that market slump really hit them quite hard quite likely that's going to really hurt output that gives saudis you know and opec some some control over prices and price stability they can they can you know take some comfort in easing output um, to support prices without having too much concern over shell producers you know ramping up output to counter um so all in all that's a positive for crude you know we do have the economic outlook to consider however and if we don't get this you know snap back in economic growth you know, through the summer and fourth quarter, then obviously oil prices are going to come under pressure. But near term, easing of lockdown measures, um, you know, that's a positive. Cutting output, that's a positive. Um, shell producers under pressure, you know, that's another positive. So all in all, pretty decent for crude oil this week. Bob, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's always an absolute pleasure. Take care of yourself and we'll speak to you soon. And thank you all for watching. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram to keep up to date with everything happening across the markets here at Dugascopy TV.